What's going on? Thanks for checking in. Today I have the top five core stabilization exercises that all baseball and softball players should be doing. All right, so in the sport of baseball and softball, core stability should be at the top of your list when doing your off-season programming. Why? Because there's something called the force stability paradox, meaning you can't produce maximal force out of an unstable position. So think about in the swing, right? That transfer of energy from the ground up through the kinetic chain up to the arms that are swinging the bat or to the arm that's throwing the ball, it's gonna get lost in the weak link. If your core isn't stable, you're not gonna be able to produce maximal force. We all wanna hit as hard as we can, okay? And we all wanna throw as hard as we can. So when we're talking about bridging that core, making it stable, isometrics comes into mind. So when we're talking about and picking exercises out to build that core and trunk stability, we're gonna go over isometric training exercises. All right, coming in at number one, like I said before, we're focusing on isometric style exercises. So all my baseball and softball players in this gym are hitting the hollow holds. I like doing them on this GHD because you're gonna get more stimulation because the legs are hanging, so the trunk's gonna naturally fall with gravity. So what you're gonna do is go reverse in the machine, feet up, and uh, come back, Dansby. Come up a little, come up a little. It's tough, it's tough. Good. To make this exercise a little bit harder, you can push your hands away from your center of mass. So bring your hands up over top of your head here. Nice. Now you're just gonna hold this isometric contraction. Come down a little bit more. Bang, just find that angle that's creating the most isometric stimulation. To take this exercise one step farther, you know, say you can hit 30 seconds in this position, bulletproof, not shaken, it's comfortable. We can go ahead and add a medicine ball to it. We're gonna add a 10, all right? So go ahead, back into it. Good, and the further you get this medicine ball overhead, away from the center of mass that's on the machine, so most of Dansby's weights press down right here, the further we move that ball back, the more stimulation on the trunk it's going to be. And you can progress this exercise with a heavier med ball, another heavier med ball, until, you know, it's hard for you to get that 30 seconds. We like to typically add this in at the end of a training session, we like to go three rounds of say 30 seconds. Coming in at number two is what we call an anti-rotational exercise, which is an isometric style exercise once again. However, it's simple. Just like the name says, we're not rotating. So this is a payoff press variation. It's one of my favorites. We're just gonna do a payoff press ABCs. So Dansby's gonna grab a band here attached to a rack, you can also use a cable machine, okay? But I like the band tension for that accommodating resistance. You're gonna get wide, stable base with your feet, so you can get a little bit wider. And you're gonna sit back. You can go hinge back a tick. So down, down, yep. Now from here, you're gonna go straight arms. Again, the straight arms is just causing the band tension further away from your center of mass. So a good rule of thumb in biomechanics is the further away the weight is from your center of mass, the more stimulation it's gonna cause because the more leverage the body has to produce on that object. So that's why we hold that band further away from our center of mass. From here, hopefully by now, everybody knows their ABCs, I know they're not uh, teaching that in schools anymore for some reason, but we're gonna go A, B, C's here. So A, B, C, and you're gonna do the entire alphabet all the way to Z. And watch, as he's moving his arms up and down, it's causing a different pattern that that band is pulling on, and the core is in an isometric contraction as the arms are moving. So it's anti-rotation, stopping the trunk from rotating with the band tension. And with this exercise, I typically add it in at the end of a training session. We won't go more than two rounds on these payoff press ABCs. Coming in at number three is an anti-flexion exercise to one side. So you can call this an anti-rotation exercise as well. We always add this in, okay? It's a heavy suitcase carry. 
So essentially, it's a single arm farmer's carry. However, with that load in the other hand, the opposite side, the obliques, rectus abdominis, has to stop that weight from shrugging you over. So you have to bring your body back to midline. Okay, so go ahead and hit it, Dansby. Come up. Big key attributes of this exercise, okay? We wanna make sure this kettlebell is off the hip. And as Dansby's gonna walk forward, we wanna almost look like if we were taking an image from the belly button up, we wanna be able to tell that there's not even a weight in his hand. So we wanna eliminate that shrug to the side. We wanna stand tall, contracting the opposite fibers here, the antagonist, and as we walk, you're creating that isometric action, that isometric trunk control. And obviously how you progress this exercise is just go heavier and heavier in weight. However, don't let form be your limiting factor. Really try to pull that body back to midline, back to center. That's how we're gonna build that stabilization component of the exercise. Coming in at number four is another payoff press variation, an anti-rotation variation. This is what we call an oscillating payoff press. So what we're gonna do is grab two bands. We're gonna loop them together to create a little bit bigger band with a knot in the middle. Then what we're going to do is grab a five pound plate. We're gonna slide it on one side of the band up into that knot, okay? You need a partner for this progression right here. We're gonna have first, the athlete's gonna go kneeling with both knees down. Good. So he's gonna grab one end to the band, partner's gonna grab the other. So what we're gonna do is walk around in a 90 degree half circle. As Dansby here, or as the athlete is pressing straight out from his center of mass, you're gonna walk around, oscillating this band, moving it up and down, so you get two points of oscillation from the partner and then from the weight. It's going up, going down. He has to fight that anti-rotation as this weight wants to pull him down. So not only is the trunk getting that isometric stabilization, the upper half, the shoulders, the entire body has to stabilize that weight as it oscillates up and down. The next one in this progression is half kneeling. So one knee's gonna be down, one knee's up, and you're simply gonna do the same exact thing. Walk around in that half moon fashion. Now from there, we're gonna go standing. Good. Lastly, we're gonna go into a split stance, standing position. So I like to do this progression. I go bottom up on the same day. So after a workout, at the end, we'll go one round through of 10 seconds. So we'll go uh, bilaterally, double knees down, we'll go split stance, then we'll stand, and then we'll go split stance standing. So it's gonna be four total sets of 10 seconds on that exercise. Coming in at number five is my favorite anti-rotational isometric exercise for baseball and softball players, okay? First, we got a reverse hyper. A lot of gyms aren't gonna have these, but they're getting more and more pronounced in gyms. So if you don't have a reverse hyper, unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to do this exercise, okay? So what you're gonna do, find your gym's reverse hyper, grab a heavier band, the heaviest one you can find. You're gonna loop it through the foothold. And from here, I like to start with a 25 pound weight plate. So Dansby, go ahead and set up in it. What we're going to do is we're going to rotate to the side as quick as we can. Then as that pendulum comes back down, we are gonna stop it with straight arms and stop that rotation. So go ahead, swing it up, rotating, stopping that momentum. Rotating, stopping that momentum. Rotating, stopping that momentum. So stop real quick. So as that fulcrum arm rotates in midair, it has no gravitational pull at the top of that fulcrum, okay? So Dansby has no tension from that initial pull. Then as that pendulum comes back down, it's gonna grab him, causing a co-contraction mechanism to stabilize that core, stimulating those intrinsic fibers of the trunk, 
and bulletproofing the entire trunk. All right, that's a wrap. Make sure you're adding those five core exercises into your training if you're a baseball and softball player. And always remember that I pump out two of these videos per week. So do me a favor and subscribe for me. I appreciate you. Catch you next week. Game Rewards are grind. It knows how much you've invested.